especially nice to see Phyllis Campbell back with us after having been gone. Francisco has an announcement, and while he's coming up, I just want to say Doug will begin again to start teaching the adult Sunday school classes, so that starts next week, next week beginning with the pack Butters. Our breakfast is coming up this Saturday morning at 7.30. Uh, I'm going to need some help. We're all going to need some help on Friday morning to uh, set up at 8 a.m. If you can help us, we certainly would appreciate it. And also to help us on Saturday morning. I've got some flyers still out there and tickets if you need them. Thank you. Some of the women in faith will be here Friday afternoon, four to six. If you have baked goods you want to bring for the bake sale, they'll be here to receive them. Anything else? Yes. Our handbells are over 27 years old and it's recommended that you get them refurbished every 10 to 15 years. And ours have never been touched. So we're asking for donations to get our handouts And there's an article about that in the bulletin. And they have to go where? Pennsylvania, Philadelphia? Philadelphia. And I'm volunteering for a road trip to take a look. So I'm let's get them refurbished. <laughs> well, I might get a ticket, but I can get there in good time. <laughs> it's like $700 to ship them up there. Shoot, I'll get the tank of gas and take them up south. Anyway, so. Read that in your bulletin. Thank you. Our opening prayer is found in your bulletin. I'll read the light from it and might read the bowl. O Lord, open our lips. And we your grace. Amen. Our opening hymn is from the hymnal number 348, Softly and Tenderly Jesus is Calling. Please stand your right.
for the prayer for illumination found in the bulletin. I'll read the light print to follow with the bulletin. Eternal God, in the reading of your scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31, and it can be found in your Pew Bible on page 53. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of Jabal. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with man and have overcome. And Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Our second lesson is in your hymnal, and it is number 749, Psalm 17, 1 through 7 and 15. We will be singing the response. Today, I'm going to be reading a passage of scripture 
from the Gospel of Matthew. And there's a story there that's told five times in the Bible. And when something is told multiple times, that's the Bible's way of saying this is really important. Pay attention to it. And the story is told a little differently each time. But it has to do with Jesus teaching thousands of people out in the wilderness. He's talking to them and they're learning from him. And it's at the end of the day and he recognizes that they're hungry probably want something to eat. So the disciples aren't sure what to do. And he said, have them all sit down. And there was a child about your age who was there with his lunch, which was five loaves of bread, small loaves like this, and also some fish, some salty fish. And he took them, and he took the bread, and he said a blessing, just like you and I would say a blessing before our meal. And he broke the bread. Then he gave it to the disciples. And the disciples gave it to all the people. And today, when we celebrate communion, I'll stand behind the altar. And I'll take bread. And I'll say a blessing. And I'll break it. Because I'm following in the footsteps of those very first disciples. Can you pray me? Dear God, we thank you for our children, the families that bring them to church, and the church that surrounds them with love and prayer. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is from the faith we sing, number 2060, Let Us Be Bread, and we'll sing this twice. Please stand your hand. Just because we know 
This is a church that he himself had not founded. It's the only letter we have from him written to such a church. And it's written later in his life. He hopes to make Rome a home base as he travels eventually to places like southern Spain. And in that church, there is some conflict involving those who are from a Gentile background and those from a Jewish background. Christianity begins as a movement within what we now know as modern-day Judaism. But what Paul fears at this time in his life and ministry is it's going to get away from that. Fellow Jews like himself will not be embracing the Christian message and becoming a part of the church, and the church will become increasingly a Gentile church, which eventually is what happened. Paul has great anguish over this, and at one point he even uses a startling phrase. He talks about his anguish and he says, if I could, I would choose to be damned if it could bring my own people to Christ. And then he says to the Gentile audience to whom he is writing, to remember the Jewish background and the Jewish heritage. Without the religion of the Jews, we would not have Christianity. If it wasn't for the testimony and legacy of the Jews, they would not be Christian. And he sums up the legacy of the Jewish faith in verse 4. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, the promises. Throughout the history of the Christian church, there have been figures from time to time who have tried to remove all Jewish references from the Christian faith, suggesting that the Bible should not include the Old Testament, and removing Old Testament quotations from the New Testament. But if we did that, and if we went beyond that to remove anything from the New Testament that alluded to an Old Testament passage, what we would have left would have a lot of holes in it, and it wouldn't make any sense. And that's why, again and again, when people within the Christian church have tried to do that, it's been labeled as heresy. We're removing much of our story and we cease to be who we are. The people of Israel were those who were adopted. The Old Testament says, I did not choose you, says the Lord, because you were the greatest and strongest of all nations. Quite the opposite. You were the most me. And that is why I chose you to do my work through. God chose the people of Israel, and through them, they became God's people. And in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, each of those writers begin their story with a long genealogy, tracing from Joseph, who married Mary, and was the earthly mother of our Lord, all the way back to the patriarchs and matriarchs of the Old Testament. It is through Jesus Christ that you and I also become sons and daughters of Israel. They were revealed the glory, the glory that was revealed to Abraham whenever God called him and cut the covenant with him. The glory that was revealed to Moses at the burning bush. The glory that was revealed in the cloud and the pillar of fire to the Israelites when they were in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. And theirs were the, were the covenants such as the covenant that I mentioned between Abraham and God that also includes Sarah, who's going to do the heavy lifting, giving birth to Isaac. But it also includes covenants such as the Old Testament passage from Genesis that Deborah read with us today. Jacob is in the wilderness, and he is wrestling with God. And in a previous passage, when he was in that place, he had a dream where he saw a ladder angels were ascending and descending. And when he woke up, he knew that this was a holy place. And God told him to anoint it as Bethel, the house of God. 
And in this passage today, when the wrestling is done and he sees that he cannot prevail, God blesses him and gives him a new name. Your name will now be Israel because you've struggled with God and humans and you have survived. And Job, he is one of those epic characters. So he's an individual, but he also represents a people. The people Israel are also those who will strive with God. And God will continue to love them and to instruct them. And there were the people who were given the law, which was presented on Mount Sinai to Moses. The law that distinguishes them as a people and teaches them how to live. The law that will set them up as an example. Later on, the prophets say during the time of exile that God's law will be given to you again, but this time it will be written on your hearts. The ancient rabbis in their commentary said, the reason that God writes the law on our hearts is so that when our heart breaks, the law seeps down inside you. And they are the people who worship. As Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go out into the wilderness so that they can worship God as is their right. And they are the people of the promise, the people of the prophets, the people who foretold that Abraham's covenant would be fulfilled in the person of Jesus and that through Jesus Christ, the world would be blessed. And by professing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, we become a part of these people and their story is added to our story christianity was never intended to be a tribal or a nationalistic religion it was meant to be open to all so that all who profess christ become a part of god's kingdom you and i have many things on our minds when we gather and we worship when we offer joys and concerns, we share concerns for those that we know, our friends in faith, our family, those close to us. We're also concerned about the nation in which we live. We are citizens and we have rights and privileges that enable us to work within our society for the betterment of our nation. But when we come through those back doors, we become citizens in God's kingdom. When we worship and we come to this table, we are claiming our citizenships in the kingdom of God. So when we are offering our prayers of concern, in addition to those for our community, we expand to pray for the world. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine who are living with the war and the struggle there. We pray for world leaders who met this week to decide what their country's role would be involved in that conflict. We pray for the people of Niger who are dealing with the uncertainty after living through a military coup this week. We pray for the, the our brothers and sisters in South Korea who are having funerals for their family members who died in a train accident that claimed 42 lives. When you and I worship, we are doing so as citizens of God's kingdom. God's kingdom knows no geopolitical boundaries. We are connected with men and women throughout the entire world. It's also not bound by history. You and I are connected to those of the past. Miriam, Moses, <coughs> Jacob, Le Leah, Rachel, Abraham, Sarah. They are our people. We are a part of God's kingdom through the gift that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that kingdom is available to all who come. Amen. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed traditional version. Join me as we recite this historic profession of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of God who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Israel, because they strove with God and with humans, and prevailed. 
this congregation has survived many challenges. Some were due to poor decisions and others because of the way of the world. Your love has remained steadfast throughout all of our trials. By our baptism, we have been born into your family. Together we witness your glory and the wonders of nature. Forgive us for times we have failed to honor your covenant. When your people were in disarray, your law gave them structure. Direct Northview Church as we fulfill your mission for this ministry. Celebrate with us as we share our joys today. Comfort us as we share our concerns. Life is uncertain, but you have promised to be with us always. Through Christ we have become your people, and in his name we pray. Hear us now as we pray as he taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for many in the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith.
yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is from the hymnal number 374, Standing on the Promises. Please stand right. Thank you.